Welcome back to Sporting with Smitty. I'm your host, Smitty. Big news out of Boston. We have a GM. It's a familiar face. He pitched five years for the Red Sox coming out of the bullpen. Craig Breslow. I'm as surprised as anybody else. Uh, no really real reports coming in about him um, being in contention for the job until the very last minute right before they announced that he was the guy. I'm excited for it. Um, a guy who... I think could bring passion to the role and uh, a guy who knows what to bring in as a world champion for the Red Sox back in 2013. I think this is an excellent, I think it could be an excellent uh, hire for the Red Sox. And looking at it, looking at the everything up and down, uh, he could definitely bring in some pieces that could make us contenders again. And there are two big things about this organization that I think need to be fixed and looked at extensively. Uh, number one, starting with the rotation. The rotation is very unreliable. We saw it last year where they can, if by the, at one point they could barely get through three, four innings, and then we were just burning out the bullpen. Just a complete me a shit show, honestly. And September, it showed. We need guys in the rotation that can eat up innings. And there's a couple of guys on my radar, personally, that I'm looking at. Obviously, I'm not saying we sign all of them, but there's at least three guys that I'm hoping that they just, hey, take a look at it. Uh, the first one is a familiar familiar face that we all know from the Rays, and that's Blake Snell. The last few years, he's been with the Padres, and he's been pretty solid for them. Last year was his best year, 2.25 ERA. Uh, I think he was 13 and 8, 14 and 9, actually. Uh, he had over 200 Ks. I mean, that's what we need in the, in, the, in, the, in the rotation right now. We need a guy that can eat up innings and get those strikeouts to get us out of innings. And he's a guy that I think can be relied on because of the fact that he's been in the American League East. He's pitched in the American League East. He's pitched in big games, in big series that have decided... Uh, where his team is at in the standings. we That's perfect for us. We need something like that. Because I'm sorry, Chris Sale is not it anymore. 2019 is not... 2019 was four years ago. It's it's done. He's not the... the he, he should not be the guy at the top of the rotation anymore. If anything, he should be at the bottom of the starting rotation. Even coming out of the bullpen... Because he does have heat, but it only lasts for maybe two innings. The one thing Chaim Bloom did that I am appreciative of, even though I could not stand him, was the fact that he built a bullpen. He got us a legit closer that we have not had since Kenley Jansen. We do, we, I don't have to hold my breath anymore watching Matt Barnes come out of a bullpen and try to close a game. Kenley Jansen gave us that. He had a couple hiccups in the season, like every closer does, but he was still very, very reliable. Another guy I'm looking at is, he had an off year, but Jack Flaherty. Why not? Another guy that can eat up innings, another guy that has been a solid pitcher for a majority of his career. He spent it most of... Pretty much all of it with the St. Louis Cardinals up until the trade deadline this year where he was traded to Baltimore. And then he struggled. But I mean, hey, I, I think that's any pitcher that's going to do that when they they trade for a guy who's been in one place for his entire career going to a whole nother, uh, going to a whole nother league in the American League. Because it's different. Especially the American League East. And I, can, I, I don't mind seeing why not we can't take a flyer on. He had a bad year, so his price should be down. It should be lower than what it would have been had he finished his season with the Cardinals. I don't see any issue with it. Next up, even though I know it's a long shot, Yamamoto. Looking at uh, recent reports, uh, I think we're fourth or fifth in the odds to land him. Other reports saying that he and his camp want to pitch in a big market. And obviously the Red Sox are definitely not a small market. So the, maybe there's something there. Granted, it's going to take the ownership to open up the checkbooks and really put out the, put up the money. 
because a lot of people are estimating his contract's going to be worth over $160 million. That's a lot to put in a guy who's never pitched in the major leagues. It's going to take it. They're going to have to take a chance on him. And it could be, hey, we can we could get our Dice K Matsuzaka type of situation where he gives us great pitching for f- four years. Or we could have a Kiyi Gawa situation like the Yankees had where he pitched he pitches two, three games and immediately you could tell that that's not the guy. Now, moving on from the rotation, another part of the of this organization that I think needs to be fixed immediately is the defense. The defense needs to be shored up immediately. It's been getting worse over the last few years. 2022, we had 85 errors, and then it bumped, it jumped up to over 100 in 2020, or 2021. Sorry, 2022, yeah, I was right. It was at 85, and then 2023 this year is well over 100. We were tied for the worst in the American League with the Oakland Athletics who were trying to lose pretty much. And we were second worst in Major League Baseball as a whole. The only team that was worse than us was the San Francisco Giants. That's going to be key. we got to fix up the defense. we got to help our pitchers get out of innings. we got to help our bullpen get out of innings. And I think the one guy that they should look at in the offseason is Matt Chapman. Matt Chapman is a solid hitter. But most importantly, he's an excellent third baseman. He has been a reliable third baseman for many years now with the Oakland A's and then with Toronto these last few years. He can hit the ball well, but like I said, most importantly, he can he can defend in the field. And we need somebody on that hot corner because Rafi Devers is not the guy. I love Rafi. I'm glad we, he's going to be a Red Sox for life, but I do not trust him in the infield on that, on that hot corner. I don't think anybody does. His fielding percentage was at 94%, which is dreadful for a third baseman. Dreadful. He's one of the best hitting third baseman in baseball, maybe the best, behind, behind maybe Jose Ramirez from Cleveland. But other, other than that, he's a horrible infielder. He's proved it these last few years. And it's been getting worse. I would love to see the Red Sox sign Matt Chapman, make him the everyday third baseman, move Rafi over to designated hitter, and have him focus solely on hitting. If he does that, he could hit 40 to 50 home runs a year if he focuses on hitting as a whole. Because right now, he hits 30 home runs a year and well over 100 RBIs. And, he st- and his strikeout rate is extreme. Is very high. He still strikes out over 100 times a year. If he focuses on hitting and, st- and his plate vision improves, he's hitting 45 to 50 home runs. I, can, I guarantee it. So that's what I'm looking for. Oh, and, and lastly, I would love to see him extend the young kids of the future right now. Do what the Braves did. Sign these guys to long-term deals to make them Red Sox players forever. Um, that's including Casas, Bayo, and Duran. Casas, he started off slow, but he turned around and he became one of the best young first basemen in, in baseball. Next up, Bayo, he's going to be an ace. He's going to be an ace of this rotation. Not this year, the next year. Next year, in 2025, he's going to be the ace of this rotation. And then Duran, he's an Ellsbury-type player, but he's going to be 10 times better than Ellsbury was. He's going to hit better. He's ha- He has more speed on the bases than Ellsbury did. Not only that, I think he could, he's probably going to stay healthy more than Ellsbury ever did. I was wrong about him after his just horrible campaign in 2022 where he really struggled. He seems like he... Got to it in the offseason. It got a lot better. And I'm excited for next year for him when he's fully healthy again. But let me know what you guys think. What do you guys think Breslow should do? What's the first thing he should really do when the winter meetings start and free agency opens up? What's the first thing he should do? Do you think he should shore up the rotation? Do you think that he should add more to the lineup? Do you think that the young guys are still too young? What do you think? Let me know down below. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Um, Continue to grow the channel every day. Uh, More videos to come. Um, 
stand by for the uh, top 25 uh, my predictions for this weekend for the top 25 see you guys soon